Hey, good afternoon. I want to welcome you all to this month's brown bag session. My name is Stephanie Sandoval and I'm the public archaeology director at the San Diego Archaeological Center. Tonight we have Chicano Park San Diego Sistine Chapel by Martin Rosen. Please check out our website www.sandiegoarchaeology.org for other upcoming events as well as how to schedule your visit to the museum. Uh, this, I'm Marty Rosen. I am going to talk about Chicano Park. I am a trustee with the San Diego Archaeological Center. Uh, I'm out of UCLA in Los Angeles where I got my degrees in anthropology. Came to San Diego in 1980 to work for Caltrans as a district archaeologist. Uh, worked my way up to the chief cultural resource person in the district. Uh, retired after 30 years. Uh, failed in the private sector and now I'm doing nonprofit work. So, um, my involvement in Chicano Park goes back at least to the, the late 1980s uh, through my employment at Caltrans. And, and we'll get to that, but first let's talk about uh, Chicano Park. Where is it? What is it? Why is it? Uh, why you should know about it? and why you should go there as soon as you get done listening to this talk. Uh, so here it is, it's in central San Diego, if you've never been there. Uh, USGS of the area showing the Coronado, San Diego Coronado Bay Bridge, coming over to Coronado. This is Interstate 5 coming down this way. This uh, another aerial pretty much just an oblique angle from the same perspective though. The bridge coming down into Glorietta Park here on the Coronado side. And on the San Diego side, it goes through, uh, you've got port industry in this area, uh, the Navy, US Navy, you've got light industry. This area, so, Again, looking at the Coronado side of the bridge coming down and the San Diego side. Again, port, port business, light industry. Now this is all housing and you can see how densely packed it is in here. And that's what this area used to look like. This is an aerial looking down on the park five going east-west across the map. The park literally sits under all these connector ramps that connect five to 75. And the red outlines the park areas. This is Caltrans right away up there. It's all Caltrans right away. So the city Back in the day, uh, any archeologist who does their, or historian, architectural historian uses Sanborn maps to research the building history of a given area, if those maps are available. And San Diego for this particular area, we have them going back to 1906. Now all these, uh, can you see me moving the cursor? Are you seeing that? Okay. Yes. Thank you. So these are all where current bridge piers stand. They're called piers because the bridges are raised and raised bridges are called, they sit on piers over the water, they're on piers. When they're on solid land, when they're on fill or at the grade, you know, they're columns, but these are piers. Here's a 1921, again, showing the housing that was in this area at the time. And 1940, it just keeps infilling and infilling with more and more houses. And that's because before World War II, this area of San Diego was one of the most vibrant, active, 
Latino, Latina, Latinx communities in all of California. Just uh, the place to be, a very happening place. Uh, the war came, came along, the Navy, the zoning, everything changed and it changed the entire character of the community in the process. In uh, the mid 60s, Caltrans started putting in, well, earlier in other parts of the state, uh, in San Diego, five didn't get through, put in until the 60s, mid 60s. This shows a picture of the Coronado Bay Bridge under construction. Now, remember, again, there's this dark area. Whoop, let me go back. This dark area is all housing. And that's what this all was. Everywhere. Back in the 60s, before there were environmental laws and things today we, that we call environmental justice, uh, community impacts assessment, cultural resource assessments, clean air, clean water, you name it, all of that. Back in the day, projects could be put in just by claiming imminent domain uh, and the, you know, the greater public need. This kind of action by governments uh, at all levels really is what led up to uh, the environmental laws that got passed in the late 60s. <laughs> Sorry for the phone call. So when it was announced that after they had broken up the entire Barrio Logan community for these bridge highway projects, Cal Caltrans was then going to rent the airspace under the bridges to build a California Highway Patrol station. And as one says, that was kind of the final straw that broke the camel's back. The people said enough. This was the 60s, mid to late 60s. Civil unrest was going on everywhere. Chicano civil rights movement. Uh, the African-American, the, the Black Civil Rights Movement. And so the community came out. They said, no, we don't want a CHP station right in the middle of our neighborhood that you just, oh, by the way, destroyed by putting Interstate 5 and State Route 75. They said, we want to park. And they put the call out and activists came out. Well, the activists were out there before. These people formed human chains uh, to prevent bulldozers from going ahead and starting <coughs> the CHP station. They came out with their shovels, their picks, soil, seeds, and they planted and they created gardens, to them sacred gardens filled with agave, yucca, uh, sage. So Chicano Park was the official establishment was April 22nd, 1970. Every year on the anniversary, the Saturday closest to April 22nd, they hold Chicano Park Day. Here is an early Chicano Park Day. It's just an incredible experience to go out there. Vendors, uh, Music, ballet folklorico, Aztec dancers, speakers, bands. I mean, it's, it's a fair. It's literally a great experience. So the park got created in 1970. The city, uh, Caltrans leased the land to the city for a dollar a year to maintain the park. The, the park then went through mural creation periods, and here are the three periods listed. The first period, these are primary local artists. The concept initially was to paint the columns, piers, all the way to the bay. 
three-dimensionally, not as just two-dimensional art, but to go on the sides and wrap around as three-dimensional pieces of art. So from 73 to 78, the work was primarily done by, by local muralists. Um, first, first period, 73, 78, local artists. In the early 80s, the call went out across California into the Southwest uh, to inviting muralists to come and put up their works in Chicano Park. Very active period. A lot of muralists added. Then from the early 2000s to this very day, they are still creating sporadically and putting up murals. Uh, two new murals are just about, uh, I think one was unveiled uh, two weeks ago and another one is coming up. So let's, this is what they did during that entire period. The uh, Chicano Park Steering Committee was formed. If you want additional information about Chicano Park, that is the place to go. The Chicano Park Steering Committee, just Google it. But from this period, so you can see there's graffiti on the mural. This here is guck that's dripped from bridge joint seals down onto the murals. Vegetation over here on the lower left growing onto the mural. You can imagine being under all this automotive activity. It is a unfriendly place for public art. Yet Chicano Park remains probably the greatest uh, accumulation of mural art in a public setting west of the Mississippi. And these are murals that went up during the early period by some of the earliest artists. Um, this, by the way, is called the historical mural. It's on a bridge abutment. It's not on a column. Again, this is women holding up their half of the world. Another one of this, La Tierra Mia, my land, Chicano Park. The date, Mario Logan. This is called the Aztec Warrior. Now it has suffered, and you'll see this in other murals in the down area, because the city doesn't have enough money or staff to maintain its parks properly. And what will happen is, let's go back to this one. The, stop it, too far. The sprinklers, the guy will come around in the morning, turn sprinklers on, not check to see where they're actually being aimed and going. He'll go away to deal with eight other parks. Meanwhile, this whole area gets sprayed with water throughout the day. Graffiti again. This, these are truly monumental murals. I mean, this one is four stories high. Just the effort to get the, the art in place. This is what's called the kiosco. In the Chicano Park Day, this is the center of activity. There is a hardwood dance floor. There's actually a mural on the ceiling of the kiosk. Um, but this is the focus of Chicano Park Day where speakers and there's also performances. Here's a mural that shows quite clearly the damage caused by sprinklers just being left to blast unattended. These murals, there has been a book published on the uh, mural documentation project. 
Um, God, I wish I had brought it with me. I could could show it to you because the iconography of the murals is incredible. Um, just looking at them, you you can tell this is the that Virgen de, de Guadalupe. Oh, foo! And they've actually created a uh, a descanso here. Uh, at the base, religion, of course, plays a huge role in uh, Latino life. Chicano Pinto Union. This is a one uh, a muralist group that came down from uh, the Bay Area to paint this. So the Chicano Park Steering Committee oversees everything. Uh, they decide. You know, they get first. A, they decide. <laughs> they decide if a, if a new mural is going to go up. They review the art and everything. They organize and run Chicano Park Day. Again, damage down here where it's mostly just black. This uh, was an interesting mural. One of the few mur murals that extended up into this area. So that was a picture of this area up here. is called the diaphragm or the cap. Only this mural actually was painted into an area that I'll explain in a minute, resulted in its being removed. You can see again, joint seals just leaking like crazy. The pigeons perch everywhere. Uh, Caltrans has gone to a, an incredible degree to try to put up uh, pigeon prevention uh, barriers. So quite a variety of art, all styles of art. Here's a, a more recent depiction of a Chicano Park Day. Beautiful, vibrant, such, such exciting. Here's a Chicano Park Day from 2004 poster. And they're already, they had to cancel this year because of the pandemic. Uh, it's a shame, but they're already gearing up for next year, which probably will be canceled also because we're not gonna have a vaccine by then. But cross your fingers. If you go out to the park, this sits out there on a display and it does indicate the location of all the murals, when they were, recreate, were created originally, if they were restored, when the work was done, who the work was done by. And now I'm gonna get back into, so me, me, how did I get involved in this? Well, being the head cultural resource guy there at, at uh, District 11, I fell upon me to deal with issues like this, cracks forming in murals, steel exposed, vegetation. This is park issues, but the police, if they're going to want to look at a suspect over here at the top, they aren't going to get out of their car and run. They're just going to drive a straight shot. So there are also issues dealing with that. Here's an example of uh, pigeon poop. Uh, uh, I was once told by one of the muralists that pigeon poop carries an unfathomable number of diseases that you don't even want to know about. So to have this happening in a park setting. Now you look at the hardscaping here. This stamped colored decorative hardscaping was put in by Caltrans as part of a transportation enhancement grant to, to do improvements in the park. Here's some more steel, exposed steel. Oil and guck just drips down from, from uh, joint seals that are no longer working. 
more vegetation. So in 1989, the Loma Prieta earthquake happened up there in the Bay Area. The Cypress Exchange collapsed and Caltrans began looking at what happened and why, and most importantly, how to fix it. Uh, and for San Diego, uh, UC San, San Diego played an important role, their engineering department, in helping to figure out retrofit fixes to prevent these kinds of things happening again. And then in 94, the Northridge earthquake and out in uh, the, the north, northeast part of the county, again, a freeway collapsing. So this is what they came up with. And this is a typical seismic retrofit of a bridge pier column. And that is to wrap the column in steel, you infill it with more steel, more concrete, and you basically, that will side, that was proven to solve most of the seismic retrofit issues in the state. Now, if they had wrapped the columns in Chicano Park, well, we can see that wouldn't have been a very good idea. So it would have resulted in destroying the columns, it would have changed the architectural structure of the columns from you know, uh, I can't think of the word, you know, re rectangular square structures, two round structures. And then the community got word that this was about to happen and they were not happy about it to say the least. And so in 96, this, was the Chicano Park Day poster, Save Our Murals. It's pretty self-evident there, what that's saying. Well, this project became mine when it became uh, a task to seismically retrofit all the connector ramps between five and 75 there, right in Chicano Park. And as part of the environmental process, uh, initially we had federal funding. So we go through a process called Section 106, which requires agencies that use federal agencies and or agency, agencies that use federal money or get permits to determine if they're gonna be significant impacts to cultural resources. I went out to Chicano Park and that's when the first time I called it the Sistine Chapel. I had actually been in San Diego since 1980, as I said, and really had never had any reason to go out to Chicano Park. It just never came up on my radar, uh, sadly. But now we were tasked, how are we gonna seismically retrofit all these bridge columns and protect the murals. Um, this is Salvador Torres. They call him Queso. He, you know, El Queso, El Gran Queso. <laughs> he literally came up with the idea of painting the columns, making, three making them three-dimensional pieces of art. This man on the right is Dr. Jim Fisher. He's a historian who worked in Caltrans, Sacramento at the time, because those of us in District 11 down here in San Diego, we're all, all archeologists. Uh, we are not qualified to evaluate the uh, park and the mural for their historical importance. So that task then fell upon Jim Fisher. I knew they were significant. I mean, I may not be a historian, but I'm no, I'm no fool. So we went to the engineers and we said, guys, you can't harm these murals. Figure out a way to retrofit the bridges without harming the murals. And, you know, I'll give engineers credit. 
you tell them they can't do something, they'll figure out a way to make it happen uh, to avoid the issues. And this is what they did. Strengthening rails on the top, this that diaphragm cap area again, they needed to widen it, make it thicker. And then here's the column, leave that under alone, alone and thicken the footings, the spread footings of the bridge, columns, piers, underground. Okay, well, that sounds great. How do we do this and this and not impact the murals in between? And so we required the contractor to hire an art conservator who came up with a plan to protect the murals during construction. And because we had no clue if this would actually work, Caltrans, probably for the first time ever, had to hire its own art conservator to review the work of the contract. And this is what we did. During this period, these are dust screens, because again, they're, they're residential apartments just right on the other sides of these screens. And the work went on underground. Here's enlarging the footing. We actually monitored um, this for historical archaeology based on those sandburn maps. We did an assessment. Uh, the likelihood was very minimal. Uh, but we had no clear record of how big the footprint had been during the original construction. In other words, when they reopened the ground to enlarge the spread footing, were they gonna stay within the original disturbed footprint or were they gonna impact new ground? So we never did find anything. So now, okay, seismic retrofits done. We got that out of the way. We then had to replace the joint seals. Another project, separate project. Again, we had to wrap the murals during the process. So now we get to around, it's still mid to late 90s. And I'm looking at all the damage to these murals in their environment. And I'm thinking, well, what? You know, there are things out there called transportation enhancement grants that are specifically uh, federal government provides funds to do certain types of projects that don't actually involve highway improvements enhancements, landscaping, cultural resources, museum work, you name it. If it's within a transportation, you know, viewshed essentially, and you can't be more transportation oriented than Chicano Park. So during the restoration, the, the retrofit and uh, process, I began to meet a lot of the muralists. And I'm talking to Sal Barajas here, who is a big player in Chicano Park. And here's Victor Ochoa looking at another mural on an abutment. Uh, what we did at this point, and we did a walk through the park looking for all the areas where we had damage that was Caltrans's responsibility things that Caltrans should be taking care of as opposed to the city, like this within Caltrans right away, graffiti, vegetation. And so then I then worked with man landscaping and maintenance to at least try and deal with these problems of vegetation and uh, spalling concrete. So I saw an opportunity with a transportation enhancement grant to get funding to restore murals. And I actually had a lot of um, political support from around the state. I got many letters uh, of support of my grant application. I did this through Caltrans and I got 1.6 million to restore murals in Chicano Park. Well, what do I know about restoring murals? 
obviously nothing. But that's where these gentlemen, Sal, Sal, Victor, Victor, Sal, this is where they came in. Working with those two gentlemen, well, first of all, I, how did I even budget this? So that's when I work with Sal Torres, Queso, uh, to come up with a grant figure. Then worked with Sal Barajas and Vicar Ochoa to prepare a Chicano Park mural restoration manual, technical manual. Here's Victor in Taiwan. That's where we got the manual printed. That's a mock-up page. So the original goal, we've produced the manual, then we were gonna produce the historic volume. Well, there is a documentation volume, but we ran out of money during the mural restoration, so we could never get around to producing the historical volume. Unfortunately, that, that really still remains to be done. Uh, they wanted me to write the introduction to the manual, which I did. We laid out through the Chicano Park Steering Committee. They decided which murals they wanted to have restored. And so here we laid it out, all the murals, and this is all the things that needed to be done to them. We had lead paint that had to be specifically and, and removed, but we went through every mural highlighting critical areas and the steps that needed to be done safety procedures, lead paint disposal, tools and equipment. Uh, turns out we couldn't specifically recommend specific brands because that's again, state policy. So we had to provide, you know, kind of uh, choices. Uh, can't do mural without calling out uh, Los Cuatro Grandes, uh, Jose Orozco, Frida Kahlo, David Cisqueros, and of course, Diego Rivera. Uh, she's not so much a mural painter, but one of the greatest uh, Mexican artists of all times. These are the three great Mexican mural masters. Uh, they studied in, you know, internationally, they did work. Uh, I highly recommend anybody who hasn't seen the movie Frida uh, to see that with, uh, Homicide, uh, Selma Hayek and, uh, oh, don't tell me, Molino. Anyway, play. so we even came up with a logo for the project. And then we started. After it took 10 years to get the grant through Caltrans bureaucracy. And then we, again, this, this is the Cosmic Mujerica mural. This is the, you know, the scaffolding, everything that had to go on to protect the artists during the process. This is the uh, Cosmic Mujerica. I, I'll show you, but again, the scaffolding. Again, any mural that was restored is now a three-dimensional piece of art with the art wrapping all the way around. Here's the work going on on the mural that's on the ceiling of the kiosco. So now I'm just gonna show you before and afters of the murals we did restore. So now keep in mind, this area was expanded during the seismic retrofit. The diaphragm, the cap was expanded. The bridge joint seals were replaced. So we don't get all this crap coming down on the mural. And this is the restored. The artists were allowed free license to, we had to actually go through a process to get all the murals copyrighted, the ones we were gonna work on as the intellectual property of the artists, rightfully so. So we went through that process. And here are, the restored murals. And you can see the changes, the befores are all on the left, the afters are on the right. Some are restored quite uh, exactly 
to their previous looks. Um, almost all of them were changed somewhat and needed to be changed, especially now to incorporate the sides, whereas before they hadn't been completed in. This one really went through a change, the cosmic muherika. The study of the iconography is would be especially important because you're it's a mind into the, it, it's a means into the mind of the artist of what they were thinking when they originally put these pieces of art up versus when they were restored. There I haven't talked about why this is all significant. So let me do that now before I forget. This played a huge role in the Chicano civil rights movement in San Diego County. The people involved, these are artists that are within the mural community, are known nationally and internationally. These are uh, recognized masters in their work. So based on their connection to the civil rights movement and their high artistic merit, these murals were found to be eligible for the National Register. They have since been placed on the National Register. Also, they're on the California Register. They're on the City of San Diego Historical Register. These murals have even been exempted for anybody who does cultural resource compliance work and works with any part of the interstate highway system there was a programmatic agreement that came out in the uh, oh, 2000s, I believe, that exempted most of the interstate highway system from section 106 because recognizing that highways are changed all the time. Uh, how do you, what do you put in perspective and context for what's historically important to keep? and a nationwide search was done. And Chicano Park and the murals were put on the exemption list. So you cannot, they, anything that goes on in this area has to go through the section 106 process and cannot be um, avoided. The park itself was found to be significant. Again, it was established four years before they started painting murals. And it was a specific outgrowth of the civil rights, the Chicano civil rights movement, uh, and uh, represents in California, one of the major localities that is so honored uh, and being recognized for its connection to the movement. So more murals. The themes, the themes cross from the fantastic to the, 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 to the real. This is all about the family and education, Leah's read, and all of the way to the bay got quite a beautiful um, restoration. It now is on both sides. Uh, says hasta la bahia on the other side in Spanish. Now the park continues further Again, the idea was to make this go all the way to the bay. In the way where you see this pink wall here happens to be a Caltrans maintenance station. So it's kind of in the way. Uh, there is a park on the bay side. The city has established the, the bay side park there. So for it to ever go all the way, some major things would have to happen. But between the street here and that wall, this is a whole concreted area that is also part of Chicano Park. This is a fountain, beautiful fountain, with a, the sculpture is, uh, I love the sculpture inside. So it, there's sculptures out here. There's actually an even broken up column from that we got from UCSD showing the fracture seismic test that the columns had to go through to determine uh, what would make them seismically safe. 
here's the kiosko. Uh, what we did is we put skateboarding was when we got a little, oh, this thing in the lower right. That is anti-skateboarding protection that the um, contractor who oversaw the mural restoration project was also um, an artist himself. And he came up with that so that we could install these uh, to prevent damage from skateboarding. Here is the uh, mural on the ceiling of the kiosko. So, you know, everything's changed a little bit. Uh, you can see the artists, again, it's their intellectual property. They had to maintain the theme. Obviously, they none of the restoration project involved putting up new murals. So they had to maintain the themes that were so important in the original murals. Here's the Aztec warrior. This one done entirely in sepia tones by Victor Ochoa. I love this one. Now this one is on the west side over there uh, where it's all concreted. This one again, four or five stories tall, unbelievable efforts to get them on there originally. This is actually painted on a surface that is then tacked up onto the column, glued onto the column. So this one wasn't painted directly on the column. This again is, um, these are, this is the abutment. Now you can see, you saw the grass here and there was spalling concrete. So we fixed all the spalling concrete, cleaned up the vegetation. They've come in here and planted the sacred agave. Uh, that, that's so important to their uh, religion. This one, women holding up their half of the world. Again, changed, but the basic idea is still there. Chicanto Pinto Union. This went on the side. So this mural on this side here that you can't see, but had never been finished, looked like that. And they, so we were able to come in and finish those. This is the historical mural I showed it to you earlier. These are historical figures in Lat Latino culture, important figures in their culture. Cesar Chavez, most prominently featured there. Uh, this is me standing up against a portion of that mural. I was um, fortunate to ask one of the, well, Sal Barajas, who painted and was in charge of restoring this mural to see if he couldn't, you know, among all these little small faces in the background, maybe, you know, could you fit me in there maybe, you know, just give me a little nod, you know, uh, memorialize me. And sure enough, he did, that's me. He didn't get the noise, the nose right, but <laughs> that's me, what can I say? So, uh, this was a talk I gave on Chicano Park at UCSD last, uh, wow, year, over a year and a half ago. Uh, and, and Saul Torres was there, came, he's still going strong, uh, gave presentation. Uh, I think the people who are there really enjoyed it. And I love talking about Chicano Park. Uh, it's just so important. Uh, such a fantastic resource in the city of San Diego. We, we are so lucky to, to have it be a part of our culture here. And I think that pretty much does it for me. Unless, uh, yep, unless uh, there are any questions. Hey, John Bass, Ken Hedges. Uh, sure. Formerly of the Museum of Man. Of course, Ken. And right. 
your uh, your before and after photos, I think, are really important for showing uh, the the changes that were were taking place when these murals were restored and essentially redesigned in many cases. And I, there's a resource you may or may not know about. I don't know you. I know you worked with Victor, but back when Victor was the director of the Central uh, Cultural in Balboa Park. He borrowed from me my slides of the Chicano murals to have them duplicated, but he was never able to afford it or get around to it. Eventually I lost track of Victor and the slides, but, oh. by, Goog but by Googling myself, uh, I see there are, there are three archive files at the uh, 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 online archive at UC Santa Barbara. There's the CD Lib organization and Calisphere. Yes. They're in a Cultural de la Raza archive, a Victor Ochoa archive, and another culture, Cultural de la Raza archive. There, I, I found the references by simply Googling my name at Chicano Park. I haven't tried to follow these up, but they are out there. They are in the archive collections, apparently directly from Victor, who never told me that he did that or never got back to me. But uh, it's just another resource. There are three sets of slides taken in 1974, 1976, and 1980. They're just samples. They're not comprehensive, but they are pretty early records of the murals there. And one of these days, I'll get hold of those people and see if I can get copies back into my collection because I no longer have them. Well, Ken, if you send me your email address. Mine is my name, Ken Hedges. Uh-huh. At... Sun Watcher, like watching the sun, dot net. And it's a public address. You're, you're all welcome to have it, whoever's listening. Uh, you can also always reach me through the sdraa.org, the Rock Art Organization website. Uh, I'm the webmaster there and a few other things. So the Ken Edge is just one word? Yep. Ken Hedges at sunwatcher dot net. Dot net. Dot net. Okay. Will do. I anyway. will I will email you Victor's contact information. Yeah, because I, I you know I ever so often I get curious and I go on the web and try to find out and that's where the slides are. I don't know if it's a complete set. They're broken up in rather interesting ways because they used to be all in one box and Victor's uh, possession. Um, so I don't know how, I don't know the story of that at all because I haven't talked to him in years. Yeah. Is he still around anywhere or is he? Oh, absolutely. Most definitely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no, I mean, he's on Facebook and, and we're friends on Facebook. And, yeah. Well, I've got his contact information. Actually, I'm not on Facebook. Well, if you're talking to him, tell him to get in touch and, and <laughs> let me know about what happened to my slides. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'll just say, like, I know this guy named Ken would like to talk to you about some slides. <laughs> but they apparently are in, it looks like all or most of them are in those archives. There was only a grand total of, I don't know, maybe, I don't know how many there were. Uh, I, I have a list of, of numbers in, in my slide list, but I don't have it on screen right now. But uh, it's, there's probably a total of somewhere between 50 and 80 slides of those three covering those three years well we have uh we have photo documented the murals in their entirety uh twice now once before the seismic retrofit and then uh before the uh, mural restoration yeah and um but you know i had to walk I, when i retired from caltrans they're all there so i i don't know yeah i really like to see them go to the uh you know Anyway, that they're out there somewhere. Uh, at least it looks like they've been preserved, which is the good part. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's great. That's good to know. That's the first time, anyway. first time in my uh, twenty-some years uh, of being involved in the Chicano Park that that your names actually come up. So <laughs> it makes complete sense. So. Uh, well, I used to drive around town, take pictures all over. I've got other murals around San Diego in that mostly the 1970s. And then I got busy doing other things. But uh, I do have other kinds of, of pictures from around the community. Oh, I, I photograph murals all over the world. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, me too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, that's awesome to know. Thanks, Kim. Sure. Hey, Marty. There is one mural that, that Caltrans will probably have to come back and 
document. Um, there was a Kumeyaay mural that was dedicated back in September. So I don't know that Caltrans realizes that it was that it's been completed and dedicated already. So, okay. uh, and if you don't have that information, I can forward it to you please. when I get when I get back online. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful mural. Oh yeah, and I know, and they're and they're just about to uh, unveil another new mural. Um, and and I see. I mean, Victor and Sal still continue to work around town. Um, so, yeah, please uh, send me uh, send me that because uh, I I I haven't seen that one, and I would like to pass that information along to potentially. Kevin Hovey, who's my replacement right. with Caltrans, uh, so that he's made aware of it. I mean, I'm sure they must have gotten right of entry from, from Kevin. I mean, he must know about it because they had to have gotten permission to go in and paint it. But um, I'll forward you the information that I have. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. And Marty, we have a couple of questions from the chat. One question is, it was my understanding that artists could put some type of symbol on their works which protected the artwork from taggers. Is this still going on? Well, what we did, especially during the restoration project is coat the murals with protective coating so that if they are tagged, it's, it easily comes off. So that's, uh, that's been done. There, with symbols, I've never, I'm I'm really in with at least four of the artists, and I've never I've never heard anything about putting uh, you know symbols on the murals to protect them or to ward off tagging. But uh, if that's what you were implying, um, but they certainly have been protectively coated now to prevent uh, you know permanent damage to them. And does that coating also cover weather and other types of damage? Hopefully. You know, like everything else, the, the science of murals is, is, is constantly evolving too. I mean, they used to use lead-based paints, uh, which have a lot longer durability outdoors. And of course they can't do that anymore. So uh, the whole art of, uh, of creating murals has evolved. All right, well, I think we are out of time for questions. If you have any more questions, you're welcome to submit them to us and we can pass them on to Marty. Once again, thank you so much, Marty, for today's talk. And thank you to everyone for attending today's brown bag session. Just as a reminder for more upcoming events, please go to our website, sandiegoarchaeology.org. Thank you. <laughs>